Okay, hi guys, my name is Shannon Beveridge. I am your host of X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. This is episode four of, no, this is episode five of the podcast. Whoa, time is flying, time is flying. I do have a guest today. I'm so excited for you guys to see who she is. She is the coolest and I'm nervous because I hope that I'm cool too, but we'll see what happens. It could go either way, you never know. But the reason I'm alone is because I asked you over on Instagram for feedback on the podcast so far. And one piece of feedback I got a few times was people saying they want to hear more from me. More of me talking. Eh, why? <laughs> I want to talk less. No, I'm kidding. I want to talk more too. I think starting a podcast and then having guests and a re- different guest every time, I'm just getting used to that dynamic and how much I'm sharing versus how much I'm asking. And I want to be a good host, but I also want to share my own stories. So it's just a learning curve. This whole experience is a learning curve. Even editing this has been such a learning curve for me. I've been editing YouTube videos for like 10 years-ish. And it's such a different situation because I'm used to filming for maybe 30 minutes and then trying to edit a video down to like around 10 versus the podcast I'm filming for about an hour and a half and then I'm getting it down to about an hour and it's just a whole new it's a whole new ball game it's a whole new world and it's fun it's so fun but I'm learning I'm learning and I'm learning how to speak more eloquently I'm trying so hard to say like less it's driving me nuts so I saw some of that feedback I also apparently say totally all the time, which I almost don't want to tell y'all because I feel like you will not be able to not hear it now, but I'm working on it. It's all new to me. I really appreciate the patience people have given me so far, uh, and I'm having a really great time. It is stressful. The sharing is stressful, and I have moments of highs and lows. I want to be respectful both to myself and to people in my life and people uh, that were in my life. So just trying to find a balance. If you're watching this, it should be January 10th. So it's one week-ish post New Year's Eve. But I'm recording this on January 3rd. So it is just New Year's Eve kind of for me. I feel like January 1st barely counted because I was hungover, unfortunately. Not a great way to go into the new year. And I'm going to learn that lesson next year, I hope. Did y'all make resolutions? And if so, please comment below because I'd love to know. Typically, I don't make resolutions just because they're hard to stick to. That's why, honestly. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know why I don't. It's just not been something I've consistently ever done. This year, me and Zoe are going to make a, a dream board or whatever for the year, and I'm looking forward to that. But if there's any resolution I have this year, it's just to be less critical, both of myself and others. Also, to give more compliments to people, just in general, friends, strangers. I've been trying my best if I think something nice about someone just to say it the second I think it because I realize what a nice feeling that is when someone does it to me. So 2024, more compliments. 2024, less criticism. So more positivity in general. Something that I talked about in my episode, both with Zoe and also Rebecca Black, is the responsibility the public people have to other people when they're talking about stuff publicly. Does that make sense? That didn't sound right. Not eloquent. I'm working on speaking more eloquently, says a sentence so bad. Essentially, the responsibility uh, that one person has when they're talking online or in public about other people, whether that's directly about them or just within a story that's actually about yourself, that there's still a responsibility to those people as you're talking about them. And We talked a lot about it from an artist's perspective, but I didn't really share from my perspective as much as I maybe should have, and I didn't reflect as much as maybe I should have as an influencer, because honestly, how I didn't mention that the podcast in and of itself is a version of outwardly speaking about people and having to be careful, maybe I did kind of, but I just feel like I could have said more. I just want to recognize that I have a responsibility to people as I'm talking on this podcast. I do know that there is a chance that things I say could hurt someone's feelings, whether or not it's my intention. I know that that's possible. I just want y'all to know, and I want anyone listening to know, that I am doing my absolute best to tread lightly in that way and also still be honest and tell stories as they happened in my life. And and I really, really, really hope that you guys can see, and I hope that I can continue 
to speak from my own point of view because that's what this podcast is meant to be. It's meant to be stories from my point of view, from my my life, my life, not how things affected other people, not specifically about relationships and talking about past partners. And I am going to do my absolute very, 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 very best to continue in that way in 2024. And I hope that you guys will stick around. And I do really, I genuinely understand the responsibility that I hold with this podcast too. I'm kind of doing something very similar to an artist, and I always have been, but now with the podcast, it's obviously, I've doubled down, and I think with the title of the podcast, it gives people the impression that it's going to be way more drama-filled than maybe it is. I did give that disclosure in the first episode that this is not a drama podcast. This is not a tea podcast. I'm not here to talk badly about people. I'm here to talk about queer things that I never got to hear people talk about. And the fact that I'm now 31 years old versus when I first started my YouTube channel, I was like 19, 1920. Who knows how old I was? How long have I been doing this? I'm blacking out. Anyway, it's a new perspective. And it's fun even to look at the numbers on this podcast compared to my old YouTube channel. I mean, I'm posting this on my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hey. But the age demographic has gone up from when I used to post videos, which is also why some of the content is a little bit more risque. I, there are words I've said in the first four episodes that I had never said in my life, I think, on YouTube in 150 plus videos I've made. So it, it's definitely, it's more adult content than what I was making for YouTube, but that's also because my demographic is more adult, which is so exciting. I'm very happy. And I hope that having these little convos at the very beginning of the episodes will make you feel more connected to me. And I hope you realize that by having guests, I will always be on the podcast. So as the host, I will always be sharing. So you'll be hearing more stories from me and more about me if you tune in every week. But I do understand that I am talking to people in a way you maybe are less used to because I'm sharing a little less than maybe if you were just watching a YouTube video of me. But I think it's exciting and I think it's fun. And I think it's fun to bounce off new people each week. And yeah, I I have some really great guests lined up and I hope you guys stick around. Let's get to the podcast and our guest. Oh my gosh, and one more thing I wanted to mention before we get into this. The microphones. Yes, I they aren't very good, I know. I am getting new microphones. It's been um, something, a process that's been happening, and I am sorry, but there will be new mics. They should be here by next episode. I'm also redecorating this room with the help of my friend Rachel Walker, so it'll be a new set soon. Look at my little cord back there. Like I know it doesn't look that great. Have patience with me, but... Thanks for being here while it starts. And I think it's kind of exciting if you are one of the first people to ever watch and you'll get to see how much it grows. So anyway, Mike's coming soon for everyone complaining. I'm sorry. Okay, hi guys. My name is Shannon Beveridge. This is episode five of X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. I'm so excited today. We have the best guest ever, Kira Green. You may know her. She is a veteran on reality TV shows, specifically Love Island. You may have seen recently Love Island Games. Yes. Right? The newest. The coolest. She, yes. She's also a content creator. She has her own podcast, and she's like a TikTok phenom with her family. Oh, family I didn't, vlogs. I yeah. didn't tell you I was going to give you this much intro, but here we are. <laughs> well, you anyway. binge watch my podcast, and now I feel like you watch some of the family videos, yeah. too. Yeah. Now I know you too well. We love her. I don't even know what to talk to you about. Well, you actually did say you were my biggest fan, and that was the the only <laughs> thing that I said when I came on this podcast. She had to say it to you guys, so. I am your biggest fan. There I you am. Go. There you also, go. I did an ask box on Instagram saying, like, what should I ask Kira? And the number one question I got asked to ask you is people asking you on a date. What? <laughs> Every single. I don't even know what you just said. All of the asks were, "Is she single? Is she single? Can I go on a date with her? Can I go on a date with her?" Am I single, Shannon? I don't know. Are you? (laughs) Yes, I am single. And simply just ask. I feel like people all the time, especially when you come off of TV, they're like, "Your DMs must be flooded, like all this different stuff." And in some ways, like yes, but also I don't know. I feel like they're not flooded, or like actual people being like, "Okay, I'm going to take you out on Saturday, and it's going to happen." Really, I'm surprised. I would think that too. Also. I feel like you talked about this on the, the episode of your podcast I watched, 
But a lot of people go on to those shows with a partner. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's really weird to me. Like, as I've been in shows now more and more, I get that it's a business and I get all these different things. But I'm just like that emotional Pisces that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to find my person. Find love. I'm, I'm a Pisces love. too. I know. I know. <laughs> We know each other a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but um but yeah, it's it's so I'm single. I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> hit me up. Hit my line. There you go. Yeah. Get in the DMs and have a plan. I'm on hinge actually. Oh it's not a fake account. Like people no think way. it's fake because I'm not verified, but it's me. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> you guys look out for her. <laughs> okay, so Kira and I actually met on the set of Zoe's most recent music video, which won't be out when this comes out, but I feel like people know that you're the co-star in yeah. the music video. We're not giving away any tea. Well, that was like the strangest situation too. I like ran into her during South by Southwest and I had just gone like a whole week binging her music videos. And Amazing. I was just like, holy shit, this is someone that is like creating these videos of like fairy tale love stories with like two women. And I just remember binge watching it like the full week before I actually ran into her during South by Southwest. And I just remember like seeing her pink hair and being like, oh, that's so weird. Well, no, I think I called her Zoefa. Something like really <laughs> crazy because I had just been like watching her for like a week and I was no. like, I tagged her online and like no. followed her and then she followed me back and then yeah, almost a year later, hit me up for the video and I was like, yeah, that's oh, crazy. Yeah. The, the timing of that was amazing. Also, obviously I was here for like all of it. You were. Zoe's my roommate, and you taught me how to ribbon dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Actually, I want that to be the takeaway from this podcast episode. Yeah. I taught Kira Green how to ribbon dance. Little did you guys know, she's a pro at ribbon yeah. dancing. When you Crazy. see it, you'll know. Yeah. No, but I was here while Zoe was trying to cast it. I've been here, obviously, for all the videos she tries to cast, and there's like so many reasons why she picks people, and obviously, one of those things is like social media presence. Like, just she wants to be with someone who also wants to post Mm -hmm. and so it was kind of like serendipitous because I feel like you had just come off of Love Island Games about that same time Mm -hmm. when she was casting and she I don't think was as familiar with Love Island as I was and I was like crazy yeah I'm a wild (laughs) this can't be my reputation (laughs) okay I do love the show though I do now all of your fans know you're a Love Islander I love the UK one yeah I said if I make a queer season that you're gonna go on I know I'll be the host and I'll find you someone. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for reality TV. You don't think you can handle it? Well, I've been asked to do reality TV before. I was going to tell you that. I, I auditioned to be on The Amazing Race. I got pretty far. I thought it was only people that were on reality TV already that went on like The Amazing Race or like The Challenge and those kinds of no, shows. No, no. Amazing it's... Race is opposite. Oh. Amazing Race is like usually randoms, except okay. for I was going to be on the like influencer season. Yeah, because I'm like, you're not very like random in that. Like you can't... <laughs> Like, I don't live under a rock. Like, you, you post and stuff, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to be on the, like, the gay... Or sorry, not gay. The influencer season. But the weird thing was, every season of those shows, specifically, like, Amazing Race and Survivor, because mm-hmm. they're the same, Yeah, there's always only one gay character or one gay team. I mean, that's the same with, like, black girls. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Not really like, anymore. To- like, Love Island Games was great. It was much very better. inclusive. Yeah, much but, better. But, yeah, there's always, like, the token. Totally, token. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So we were going to be the token gay team but when we showed up to this hotel which I signed an NDA so I could be sued I guess but how many years it's been a long time okay it's been a long time but when we showed up the other gay team that we recognized was Tyler Oakley and it was like at the like peak Tyler Oakley like YouTube phase Mm -hmm. and when we saw him we're like we're out like it's not gonna be us what do you mean because That's we, not true. we were really know. tiny me it was me and my ex-girlfriend we were like much smaller influencers at the time yeah but also they wanted us to be cutthroat mm-hmm. so they were like, the producers which i want to talk to you about this okay let's hear it i'm not following my outline at all I'm well, not, we're just talking where, i'm just here no no, no no this is great she was so nervous guys I, deep breath <laughs> i'm still nervous what are you talking it's about okay okay uh okay anyway my experience with producers was obviously much more minimal than you have had mm-hmm. but we did all those kind of interviews on camera where they're like asking you questions and I remember one of the questions she asked was, what would you do if the team in front of you, like, dropped their wallet with yeah. all their money? Be savage. And we said savage. we would give it back. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> because it was the truth. It's a competition. I know That's the, the truth. truth. If you were in a competition show and you could win a million dollars with your partner at the end and 
put a down payment on a house and do all these things, you're going to give them their wallet. And this is why you've been on seven <laughs> reality shows and I've been on none. Because it's not, like, it's real life, but it's also not real life. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. No, I agree. I We didn't know, though. We just, and we were, at the same time, we also kind of had a brand before, you know, because we were influencers. Of being, like, nice We were kind friends. of, like, girl next door <laughs> Okay. But it was the truth at the time. If I had yeah. known more, and also if we had wanted to be on it more, mm-hmm. it was a fun experience, and I had a great time. Yeah. But it wasn't like, oh my god, this is this is what I want in my life is to go on the show. I get it. Yeah. So we said we'd give it back, and the producer looked at us, and she was like, "If the team in front of me dropped their wallet, I would pick it up and eat it before I gave it back to them." Oh. And we were oh. like, "Wow." We we're like, "Okay." You said actually. Okay. <laughs> We're actually, this is not the space for me. I don't feel comfortable anymore. We're actually done here. Thank you so much. No, but obviously we didn't get picked. But we got to meet, we met the hosts. Like, okay. we, were, we were up in there. There were producers. Yeah, reality TV is fun. I mean, now I'm like, these producers are my bitches. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. sure you're a veteran. That's what I wanted to ask you about. First of all, you've been on seven shows? Yes. Yes. Can Sorry. you? Yes, I have been on seven shows. <laughs> I whisper, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, obviously, I feel like a lot of people who are my audience will know you from your most recent show that is the most recent one right you haven't done one (laughs) no not right now maybe one in the talks but not at this moment in time okay am i in a contract okay so your most recent one you it was obviously so widely received by queer audiences because were you guys the first second couple ever we were the first so it was a u.s production show Mm -hmm. even though it was like love island games which was it's all own. the different countries, but it was a U.S. production, so we were technically like the first same-sex couple for like the U.S. Love Island. Got it. But there was um, was it Australia? Was, no, I think it was the U.K. season two. I want to say early days. Yeah, and they got like so much shit for it, and it was just like not okay. not well received. Or, this was well so received. yours was so well received. I feel, and I was surprised by that. Honest, I mean, I was and I wasn't because yeah. I know that, like times have changed in a lot of ways and even when I went on my first season which was four years ago a lot of people think I came out on that show I did not come out on that show I just like talked about liking girls and they're like she came out I was like no 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 no. I've been out since I was like 13 something like that at that time I I think I was way more insecure about Mm -hmm. being open and I liked a girl on the show but she kind of was like she said she was bi curious and didn't know if she could have feelings, so I kind classic. of like pulled away. <laughs> I mean, classic. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The judgment. No, no judgment. I love. No, my, like, I love bi girls. Well, yeah. Well, but the bi curious yeah. thing is classic. I feel. Yeah. Or like, like when you're talking knowing. to a girl who doesn't know, and maybe then she's like, "I've kissed a girl before." Yeah. Yeah, and I've and done you, that. Yeah. I've done that. I've yeah. done, I've played around with that, and it's cool. Everyone has their own journey. Yeah. But I think when she said that, I had done it already before, and I was like, okay, i got to protect myself, and kind mm-hmm. of pulled away. So everyone wanted it on that show for that to happen, but once again, I wasn't about to, like, push something or yeah. push someone, like, faster than what they were ready for, and all the different stuff. Like, the producers were definitely at one point. Like, I initiated first, and then they saw how much people reacted, but we had no idea that it was, like, going crazy like that because we had we don't have oh our phones. Oh, my God, yeah, because it's live. That's the crazy thing yeah. about... If you haven't seen Love Island, it, it records and then mm-hmm. posts, what, yeah, within 24 like, hours? Yeah, it's, like, we film the day before, and then it airs the next day. But we don't have our phones. We have no connection to our family and friends. Even before we go in for, like, six weeks were or like more than six weeks like I was put in as a bombshell so I came in on day one you know Uh, bombshell there she is you'd be a bombshell in my queer season (laughs) what are you talking about (laughs) but um but yeah no so we're already in quarantine for like six weeks or more than that so you're just like detached from everything and everyone wait do you know when you go that you're gonna be a bombshell or if you're gonna be like you don't even know that you're gonna go on the show so just there you're just there. All the other countries, they, like, kind of tell you, mm-hmm. yeah, you're going on the show. U.S. is, like, one of the only ones that, number one, they'll, like, call you the week before. And they're, like, pack your bags. You're going to this random-ass country Classic. to find love. And know that you, once you get to the airport, you're going to have a chaperone that's pretty much going to run your whole life for the next several weeks, like a month. And they're going to take your phone. And you can't watch TV. You can't watch anything that, like, brings you into normal world living. So you just go crazy. Dude, and what do you do? I brought some books. That's I don't even nice. read. No, I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> I brought them. That sounds so bad. I mean, like some books, but I'm, I don't know. I'm more of a visual person. I don't read many books. <laughs> I'm not judging you. Okay. But I brought books. I brought like coloring books. That's so nice. Yeah. And it was a nice resort. Also probably nice to detach, like to have, yes. be forced to detach for a second. I no, think yeah. no one really gets that opportunity. 
It's, it is amazing in a lot of ways. And honestly, when you come out of it and you get your phone back and say you've been gone for like two months, you get all these text messages and like all these things. And it's almost like too much to handle. Yeah. Like you go a little crazy. Fair. Like they literally give us a therapist that we have to speak to once a month for like six months out of the show. Well, that's good because I feel like what was that show that they were like, no one gave us a therapist? Was it the ultimatum? No, it was Love is Blind. Oh. There's a bunch of people from Love is Blind, one of the seasons, like, advocating for mental health yeah. when it comes to well, reality TV. Yeah, well, it gets kind of scary afterwards, and a lot of people, you know, unfortunately have, like, gone through a really, really bad yeah. time, so it became a thing. Like, after my first season of Love Island, we got life coaches. Oh, I loved that. Love that was that. cool. You're having, like, <laughs> your whole life has changed because of this show. It really has, though, in a lot I of mean, ways. I mean, for sure, right? Yeah, I mean, even, like, not coming out of the show with everyone thinking I came out and just being... In the first season of Love Island, and so many times, like, there wasn't a bi girl, or, like, people didn't, they would say it. I don't even think that there was... It's so heteronormative. That show is so heteronormative. Almost all of the shows I've been on have, and sometimes people are like, how does that make you feel? And it doesn't make me feel the best, honestly, because I would love to go in. Before Love Island, I had only been in relationships with women, Mm. and I had just realized... Like, I thought I was a lesbian for a while, and then I realized that I was bisexual when I was 21, literally. Oh. Okay. You're kind of like flipping the script. You're flipping the script on queerness. I guess. I don't know. Like, I knew from a very young age, I got that feeling in my stomach and all that different stuff for women. And my dad's bisexual. We make a lot of videos on TikTok together. Um, and legend. He's a legend, man. Like, he inspired me so much to, like, yeah, be open. Be open and be myself. And I still had, like, a weird feeling of, like, shame and, like, it sounds always shitty when I say it, but, like, disgust when I thought, like, oh, I was into women and stuff. And I didn't really see many women, I feel like, that looked like me that were into women. They were always way more masculine and stuff. Yeah, at a very young age, I, like, came out to my dad. And then I was super antisocial, so I didn't have, like, many gay friends. That doesn't sound like you. You seem so social. (laughs) Everyone says that, but I'm not. It's a lie. It's It's not a lie. Like, I think that I've been in the industry for a while. Mm. Like, since I was nine. Yeah. I was a kid's love kid. Oh. It's my biggest flex ever, you Yeah, know? Not much bigger than being the, Just the first U.S. queer relationship. No. I mean, it went nowhere, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, we bounced around eight million things. I know. What? But I loved all of it. Okay. <laughs> And I'm going to just leave it as it was. Okay. One of my things I was going to ask you is you did, you had like queer experiences really young, mm-hmm. right? Or like mm-hmm. a normal, but like in high school versus yeah. a lot of people don't get to have that experience. Middle school. Middle school? Yeah. So sorry. Okay. But <laughs> it's interesting because same, so did I, which mine went really poorly. Okay. Mine, my had one really, but it went really poorly. Just like really unaccepting parents from her end. But the weird thing that happened to me is I felt so validated in my sexuality after that, like secretly, mm-hmm. even though I didn't tell people. Mm-hmm. Once I once I kissed a girl, anytime I kissed a boy, I realized that it was not the way it should feel. And so it kind of made it easier for me to come out in a way going down the line because I was like, I know how good it can feel to kiss someone. And then I like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, wait, I'm gay. And also it made me so scared. And I had all those feelings of disgust. Yeah. And also feelings of like borderline suicidal feelings when I was little growing up in Texas too Mm -hmm. but you're from New York Mm -hmm. anyway do you feel like having experiences younger helped make you stronger like do you feel more like yourself now I guess it's weird though because then you decided you like boys yeah so how did that happen (laughs) (laughs) so I mean when I first and like my first situation kissing a girl was just it was terrible because I think I was so excited yeah that I was just like going too hard man (laughs) I swear she was like you need to calm down no like she was like slow like I was just so excited and so like oh shit like this is happening yeah Yeah. but then yeah as time went on I I mean I was still I didn't sleep with a guy until I literally like fell in love with my sister's best guy friend at 21 and that's when I slept with a guy but before that I was still like making out with guys and I I wasn't fast in any type of way so I was pretty much a make out whore nice (laughs) nice (laughs) um but I mean as I still know. I still get very insecure and like mm. some type of way sometimes when it when it comes to women. Like really? I don't know if it's something and my dad was just saying this to me the other day too. It's like why do you like I keep my cool so much when it comes to dating men mm-hmm. and it just doesn't really like I don't flinch an eye. And then when it comes to women I get I get so excited and I just get so nervous and I get so much like 
what you have to be and all this stuff. And like, I'm just to a point now where I'm like, okay, whatever here, like just be yourself. And if that's enough and if that's a vibe, like that's that's cool. That's what's right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think with like women and men, I, I always second guess myself sometimes, but it's just, that's human. You know, that's so funny. I feel like I don't see that from you, but I get it. Everyone says that I seem very confident and like, well, I think I just know how to, it's a classic been working for a long time thing mm-hmm. too I feel yeah when you're around adults from such a young age you yeah. just can like mask yeah. so well mm-hmm. okay second question <laughs> a second I don't know where, we, where are we <laughs> don't I don't know it's your podcast I keep on telling I know, you I know. Tell whatever me. I feel like it'll be enjoyable to watch but okay when I watched your video about having a girlfriend your first girlfriend mm-hmm. which did you just say the first guy that you hooked up with was also your sister's friend do you have Why like you have, <laughs> you have like a thing? Don't tell her you have a thing for your sister. No, friends. I'll bring it back to. I'm very as much as I don't seem like it. I'm very antisocial. Got it. It's like I become really close with people that I'm working with, or when I was going to school, or all that different stuff. It's very hard for me sometimes to like put myself out there in new situations unless it's like. I have to. Mm. And I also feel like I stopped going to school. Like I started homeschooling because I was working mm-hmm. and like traveling. So. Socially in general, sometimes like I just exposure, get... exposure. Like, who you, you who you were exposed to. Yeah. So your sister was bringing people around exactly. and you were falling in love with them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you hit it on okay. it. There you go. Okay, got it. Okay. And she brought really hot people yeah. around, okay? It's so, your sister's fault. It's your it's, sister's it's fault. all her fault. Okay. Did you watch, like, YouTube videos or, like, videos of people, like, for exposure to queerness? Of course. Yeah. But did you feel... Like, you had representation in that. I know you just said you didn't feel represented by, like, obviously the Ellen DeGeneres of the world, because mm-hmm. that's not really... Giving... You don't think I look like Ellen? Not quite. That's so freaking <laughs> rude. <laughs> not not dare quite. You. Not um, quite. But did you feel like, did you find representation from anyone? Because I feel like the internet back then was still really not that representative of, especially not white people. Yes. I, I feel like I remember seeing like the l word yeah and there were so many different like there were like lesbians there were bi girls there were femme girls there were like everything and anything in between and it wasn't like over sexualized it was just like this group of women Ugh, shane Sh- Did, i can't believe you just said the l word wasn't over sexualized but i mean i if it was i loved it <laughs> yeah, I was say, I was maybe i say, just didn't have a problem with I it i think you just liked it i don't know it felt natural no it was it was it felt natural to me like maybe shane was the most like part but like we (laughs) needed that we all needed needed shane Shane. we needed um and i didn't live under a rock i was coming around the time of youtube and you i remember you okay i wasn't at i was wondering (laughs) i didn't say you were i'm just saying okay i wasn't fishing for that but now it's i feel like it looks like i was fishing for that I don't think you're fishing for it, but yeah, I didn't live under, live under a rock. And I feel like you were the first around that time. There wasn't that many lesbian YouTubers Mm -mm. at the beginning Mm -mm. at all. I remember a show called Awkward as well. And I remember loving it because I think was she bi or there was a guy that was bi and I was like, oh yeah. I think the girl was bi too. One Mm -hmm. of the girls. Because I love when men kiss. I don't know. I love it. Okay. okay. We're learning so much. (laughs) Me too. Me too. Do you? Oh. I used to, like, exclusively watch gay male porn, which I don't know if I'll leave that in, but there was a time in my life where that was the only thing I watched. And I think, I don't know what it was. Like, I couldn't sexualize women, Mm. and I couldn't picture myself sleeping with women, so it was like, Mm. that made me feel safer. But apparently it's, like, a lesbian thing. Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, I I don't watch that. (laughs) I'm going to circle way back, but back to the producer thing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you felt like you came off as a true authentic version of yourself on all seven shows that you were on or do you feel like there was a lot of like producer manipulation going on Mm. (laughs) it's a lot of shows it is a lot of shows and I was always going through something different Mm. in each show so like my first season and I always am very like I'm very aware of my issues and I was able to see on that show and I think it actually is pretty rare for producers to not you know, be puppet masters, Mm -hmm. but we were the first season and they really didn't like make us do anything that we didn't want to do. Actually, when I would ask for advice or like, how is America seeing me? They'd be like, I can't say anything. Like you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But I definitely watched myself on that show, like do things that people told me I would do and that I didn't realize that I did. And then I watched me do it. Do it. And I was like, oh wow. Like this was, it's very eye opening to watch yourself on TV. I can't even imagine. I I could never do it purely because I'm such a control freak. Well, yeah, you like, you're you're filming yourself, but you edit it. Yeah. yeah, Even my podcast, like, 
I could ha- I could have hired people to do my YouTube videos yeah. forever, but I can't. Yeah. I need to touch it and change it. You need and, to be in control. Yeah. Yeah, I got that. But that must have been such a weird feeling to not be in control. It was, like, but it was exhilarating because I... I mean, that's why I don't do drugs, really, because I don't like to be not in control. I love my alcohol, but, like, I, I do like to be in control, yeah. but being on these shows and, once again, growing up somewhat antisocial and feeling like I wasn't like everyone else, it felt like college. Like, it was yeah. just so cool, and, and I did feel like I was myself in a lot of ways on there, and I was kind of scared of my first show, but as time has gone on, I let one show... <laughs> I mean, seven shows. Seven shows. I, Pro- I don't know. I always say, like, this past one was my last one, and then I do another, so yeah. we'll see. It could happen but, again. But yeah, you just have to be strong in these shows. And like when people tell like the producers tell you to do something, they can't actually make you do mm-hmm. it. They can send you home technically and like find a way to get you out if you're boring. But they would always kind of try to make me the villain. And really? Like, oh, yeah. They love oh, to yeah. do that to queer women, by the way. That's like a trope. You think? In in reality TV, yeah. You Usually like on those amazing race shows, yeah. the lesbians are mean. Really? Yeah. Which I just it, feel like we're over-sexualized in a lot of ways. I mean, that too. Yeah. But like, I remember one show, and it's the show that I let the producers kind of tell me what to do, and thankfully it didn't get that big, so I didn't get a lot of hate, but I listened to them, and at one point they were like, steal her from this other girl, and like, I did all of it, and then at one point, like, our date was us, like, massaging each other, Okay. and then getting in a hot tub after, and the whole time, inside, I was just like, I hate it, I hate it here, yeah. this does not feel good to yeah. me, I don't feel like... Feels I, pointed. Yeah. So there have been times where that has happened, but I think after that, and that was like my third show, after that I was like, I'm going to be me, and I don't care if it's boring, I don't care if it's not what they want me to be, but yeah. I'm not about to be like shown in some way that isn't authentic to myself, especially yeah. when I feel like I've grown such like a loving, supportive community on like TikTok and like these places that I don't want them to be like, who is that? Yeah, it's not even who, who is Like, who is she, you totally. know? Okay, wait, what were the things that you like caught yourself doing that people had told you you do but you didn't she know said, what are your red flags <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if it was a good or bad thing but what were you doing um like I feel like when someone would get close to me that I liked I would find a way to try to escape got it before you know I mean you the emotions would already be there before it got real and in these shows you're like trapped in a house for yeah, however where are you many gonna days go? you don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> where are you gonna go so I just watched myself you know and it was my first boyfriend ever that I got from Love Island mm. at 21 no 22 and I every step of the way he was just being great and I was finding ways and reasons to like not, not be like happy him. yeah and then the second that I felt him pulling away I would be like wait I love it. And that's toxic as fuck. <laughs> so and that's not how it's supposed to go. No, but I was 22 and yeah, baby. First time like dealing with a man in a relationship. I'd only been with women, so it was all he was almost 30. So like there was also a gap and I was just kind of figuring shit out, yeah, you know. Yeah, of course. That's wild. That's wild that so you didn't ever have a boyfriend going on to the first season of Love no, Island. No, I had just lost were- my boy V card. Like, like, right before. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> so the producers, obviously going in, you'd only ever had girlfriends. Did you tell them that? Yeah. I told them everything. Yeah. And I, in, in telling them everything, I had hoped that there would be more women on there. Because I was like, I definitely want to be able to date both. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. No. Yeah. was not the case. Um, but I told them everything. And so I, were they hoping that you would go on no. and steal girls from boys? Or no. were they like, hopefully she'll go on and find a guy? I feel like when I went on, there was no layout at all that made me feel like, oh, they wanted me to be with a girl. It was like, yeah, you're bi. And also they typecast sometimes. It's like, let's be more inclusive. And, you know, no, I didn't feel like they wanted me to be with a girl whatsoever. But when I expressed interest, because I also wasn't going to go in there and just be like, I'm into girls and just go for girls to go for girls. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until I think three weeks in that a girl came in and I was like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I remember all the other girls because once I said this as well and this yeah. happened back when I came out you know once you say you're into women every woman thinks that you're into them as well especially yeah. a lot of the straight girls I've been around like when I went to school and stuff the second I came out you know they would change me like I'm yeah like, I like, like women yeah. but I didn't say it like you <laughs> you know and like all the girls when I said that I liked women on the show they were like oh you know when this girl came on they're like you didn't ever flirt with any of us I'm like because you guys aren't like I'm not into you well that too yeah I'm not into you I'm into her you know but yeah I didn't express interest for her until like three weeks in they didn't really push it and then I think we got like a big I didn't know Mm. but the audience watching and like all these news sources like were writing about it wanting it to happen I'm sure and then it felt like they almost tried to like push push it but 
I still had to be true to myself. And I was like, she is trying to figure things out right now. I keep on bouncing. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and yeah, I just, I just felt like she wasn't in a place that I felt like felt like I could open up to her yeah. in that way. Fair. Yeah. And also, like, that's you as someone who's been who's come out. You know how stressful that experience could be, and then to do that on national television. Yeah. Like, do you want to be someone's first girlfriend on national I television? I just don't. I don't My know. first girlfriend, I was like, literally got put <clears throat> back in the closet for like almost a year. Yeah. Because of her background and everything, so. I loved her and I'm happy that all happened, but I was just like, I can't do this again. again. It's too scary and hurtful if it doesn't go the way that I, I want it to. Yeah. I've you feel that, me? I've had that experience. <laughs> I've had that experience. Your eyes just went like, yeah. yeah I'm like, so, uh, sorry, I'm having PTSD over here oh, from no. my experiences. But yeah, no. Obviously, that's like a huge burden to take on with someone. So you would you date a bi curious girl? A bi curious girl? I curious. Yeah. Well, no, yes. I we would, know you love the bi girls, but would you date a bi curious girl? I would go on dates with a bi curious girl. I would only date a bisexual girl or someone who I like actually truly believe would marry a girl. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I would go on dates with a bi curious girl. I don't yeah. have like a. You, you said I'd fuck around and find out. <laughs> no. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's a saying, not actually. Yeah, you know? Yeah. No. I, it's not a kink of mine. That's my oh, thing. Yeah. You know, but some people, it's kind of like a kink to be the one who shows someone the ropes. Like, that's like a lesbian thing sometimes. It's, I feel like, not even a younger thing, because everyone's different, but when it, when that would happen to me, especially go on these shows, and they're like, I would be gay for you, or like, if there was one girl I would do it with, it would be, be you. you. And at first, I was like, four years ago, yeah. Like, it's whatever. like a confidence yeah. boost also when you're... But now I'm like, no. Yeah, I like, no. I don't, I don't like it. I don't no. <laughs> I don't. I like, don't so I your don't. answer is you wouldn't go on a date with a bi curious girl. I feel like it's like, of course, every situation is different. If I see <laughs> her and I'm like, yeah, I'm willing to put my all into this. I will build a freaking building. Like, cool, yeah. But yeah. It, it just depends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's. We're like, we're not cutting anyone out. The roster. No, open. It's, it's always open. Hit my DMs. Oh my god. <laughs> Find her on Hinge again. She's there. <laughs> Do you actually want to create, like, a queer love island or, like, a version of that? I know we had – what was that show? Um, um, <laughs> always the queer f- version. The ultimate – was it the ultimatum? No, well, the was ultimatum also- was gay, the lesbian one, but the – Are You the One? Role? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We've had a version of that. Yeah, but I didn't like Are You the One. <laughs> that show got really sexual. There was too much. There was a lot of sex happening. Like, I liked it, but I just, it was, it would be fine if there was also relationships and stuff that I could follow, but I yeah. just felt like it was so, they didn't, get drunk and, you know, so yeah. I was just like, mm. Yeah, they didn't create, the, the show didn't have structure for anyone to actually, like, fall in love, yeah. I don't feel. And you I don't think to, it's like, anyone's build. fault from the show, you know? You know, it's the producers. Yeah. It's the producers. They were, I blame you. It's the producers. Yeah, the producers. <laughs> but do you think there's a world where an actual version of a queer Love Island exists and works and is not overly sexualized and could be... If I'm in control of it, yeah. it won't be ITV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but... I do think that there is that space. I yeah. think that it needs to be there. Yeah. I think the same way that Zoe does her videos, like there is that space and it can be created in the right way. Totally. And I will host it. And, and I'm you will right. be the first contestant. <laughs> Why do I have to and be on it? You're going to win and find love. I don't want to be on it. I feel like there is space for a queer reality TV show, mm-hmm. especially in 2024, which is so weird to say. But because... Well, all we've had is like Teela Tequila. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. Was what was what was the a show? A shot though? at love. A shot at love. Yeah. A shot at love with yeah. Teela Tequila. Yeah. No, I feel like there hasn't been, and that was great for me because she was like, bye. She was dating. Both I know. And it. it was everything. I felt so dirty watching that show. You felt dirty. Yes. Yeah, like Why a, did you feel dirty? Because I loved it. <laughs> I was like, I think I like this more than all my friends. She loves her buys. Yeah, but. <laughs> But I do think that there is space. Like, to answer your question, I think that there have been some shows, but I don't think it's ever fully been done right. Mm -hmm. And it did feel good to go on this show and, you know, bring visibility or, like, make people feel like they are being seen. Yeah, for sure. You know, because so many times that doesn't happen or there's two girls that flirt on these shows and it doesn't, like, follow through. And I, like, genuinely wanted to see with Megan, like, if there was, like, something more there and she was mysterious and all this different shiz. It did not go well. (laughs) But I feel like for so many people, and and then even on my first season, I think so many people.
sweet just like two girls falling in love yeah two guys falling in love or whatever I you know. know i want a lesbian bachelor bachelorette no i want whatever you want what do you want to host <laughs> <laughs> you want a, you want a gay love island yes okay or well or what you don't want to give it away because yeah. it's a real show you want to make. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. Keep an eye out for a real show that maybe Kira will make. And I think my issue is trying to find love on TV, though. I, I also say that. No, y- y- for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, maybe we don't need any more reality shows. Or like dating reality shows. Like you on it. Me hosting. You can host. Me bringing people together because yes. I'm just such an expert at finding love because <laughs> I'm so in love. Clearly. You know? But yeah, I think that there's that space. I think that it needs to happen. I think that it would be amazing. It's going to happen. It's bound to happen. What great television, if you had like a lesbian bachelor or queer girl, any show like that. Yeah. Or gay man one, I guess, too. I guess. Gay man one. <laughs> gay man. The um, gay man. <laughs> I really am only out here thinking about the girls. But it would be such good TV. Because you know the girls that are the contestants would also probably have their own little love triangles. Oh, yeah. Oh, women dating women? She yeah. is messy. It would have been it would be so, so messy. good. It's like, like, it sounds like reality TV should have already jumped on this. I just think that things have been done in, like, the same way for so long, and mm. that's TV. Like, if it's not broke, don't fix it yeah, it's just type structured. of thing. Yeah, but I do think they see, especially when they cast me, or, like... <laughs> Or, like, in general, when you put people on that people feel like they haven't seen someone that's like them on TV, it gets a great response. And there's always going to be those people. Of course, I got comments from this past show saying whatever they want about my sexuality, which has always been the hardest thing. Like, you're barely at a straight veil. Or she just wants to be on TV. She's actually just into women. Like, all those different things that, as much as I'm like, it doesn't bother me. Like, it still bothers me. But I think, in general, for people to be able to see themselves on TV and to have a show like that would just be so good. Okay, we're yeah. advocating for it. Comment below if you want a show like that, okay? Because I do. Yes, I would watch it. You'll Every- be on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll be on it. If you want to date me yeah. on Kira's show. Hit me up in the DMs and I will <laughs> yeah. I will link it. I will make it happen. Okay, and then find her on Hinge. Okay, anyway. Or Raya. Oh, true. Yeah. We know all about Raya. We love Raya. Do we? Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you feel... Like, you've experienced biphobia then? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Especially from the show stuff mm-hmm. and those viewers or in real life all the time in general? Um, like I said, I always get two different sides of it. When I came out in middle school, um, I just felt like some people were like, oh, and I was like the only person. At that time, it wasn't even, like, I know that there was that whole phase too where it was like, it's cool girl to be like wanting to kiss girls. Yeah. Katy Perry, Ch- whatever yeah, that song yeah, yeah. was. I kissed a girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. I, know. I was like, um, what is she talking about? But oh, I, 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 yeah. Oh, is that what it is? It's like the taste of her cherry chapstick. That part. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So you're on to something. Okay. But I would get people that were like, oh, she's doing it for attention. Or I would get people that were saying, I'm not really into women because I don't look like I'm gay. Mm. And I also say that I'm gay and people get mad at me for that too. They're like, no, you're bisexual. But I don't know. I just, <laughs> it just comes out. Yeah. Well, I, I think gay is an umbrella turn. Yeah. Now. I think so now. too. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat, I say. But no. (laughs) A lot of the time growing up and even still now, I feel like, oh, if I walk into a bar or I'm in a setting, especially because I'm in a lot of like mainly straight Mm. spaces, I feel like sometimes, oh, I have to prove something or be something and like all this different stuff. And I'm like, no, Mm -mm. I like that. And that's okay. Yeah. Because I am me and I like that and I don't have to be anything that I'm not. Good. Yeah. Let's keep doing that. <laughs> it's also, it's probably nice that you have your dad who's bi, yeah. right? Yeah. It Was he out to you your whole life? So it was never like, I, like, I'm very vocal about my bisexuality and even his, because I think it helps so many people and like, still people get mad at me for that. What, it, why are you saying, why are you talking about it so much? I'm like, because I didn't see that growing up. So I like. No, at all. Yeah. But he was just, him and my mom both, they were always like, whoever you love it's fine. You mm-hmm. know, I don't care. And it's actually what my pop-up would even say. My dad's dad, he's like, he would say black, white, polka dot, like whatever, <laughs> whatever. floats your boat, mm-hmm. you know? So I think my whole life, I just knew that. But even having supportive parents and them being like, we love you no matter what. And at a very young age, I, even before I came out to my dad, he just brought up to me recently that I came out to him, like even before that. No way. When I was like younger, younger. That's like, why. Yeah. Like, and before I, you even probably were conscious of what you were saying. I guess so. Like, I think I said to him something like, what, what, what would happen if, like, I like people like me? And he was just like, 
then that's okay, you know? But I still had that inner shame, and, like, I bawled my eyes out when I told him, but he was the first person I told because I felt like I could relate to him, and he was someone that was like me, and he loves my mom, and he's in this relationship, but that also doesn't change, like, his sexuality and and what he is. So he's definitely been a role model to me and someone that I come to very often, even in my crazy dating life yeah somewhat non-existent as well but like (laughs) when it is existent I do come to him for advice you know and he's just like calm down like it's okay be you no that's so nice I can't imagine having that experience but I also can imagine I can imagine in the ways that it felt validating that it could also be a little bit invalidating of those bad feelings you had because you're like I have this role model I have this experience that most people don't get and Mm -hmm. I have this like cool proud dad and then I'm feeling not really good about myself like that shame and then would that also internally mean that you're not proud of him like that feels like that could be a complicated internal experience that you would have no I mean growing up he was always very out there Mm -hmm. and I don't mean that in a negative way but he always what's the saying like walk to the beat of his own drum and like he has dreads down his back he has painted nails and I remember even being in kindergarten and him walking in and I hate it to this day that I even did it, but I was, like, young and kids say whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want you, like, coming into my classroom anymore. Because no. I was like, the rest of the daddies don't have their nails painted. Mm-hmm. And, it's like, yeah. you know. And I can't imagine on his end having, like, his child say this to him. And he grew up in a very religious community, like, in the suburbs, nothing like me. So already was very hard for him to, like, was shamed his whole life in church. Like, all this different stuff. Mostly was with men, like, not in public ever. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I was probably just projecting onto him Mm -hmm. and I feel bad to this day, but like, I think with everything that we've gone through, like I love him and I think he understands it. Of course. I mean, it's, it was probably internalized homophobia that you were just projecting onto your dad, which is just such a unique experience because we don't get that much. We don't have that that much. Yeah. But also like he was with my mom Yeah, and it's like, well, you're bisexual, but you're, you still ended up with a woman and Mm. you're a man. I'm... I thought I was lesbian at the time. I came out as bisexual and I am bisexual. But at the time I was like, I'm ending up with a woman. Mm, like, totally. so it's different. It's, it's and like, I'm more scared. Yeah. You know? I mean, so different. I I don't know. That's such a unique, fun, exp- I mean, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just that I love your chaotic I, trauma. I love your... <laughs> <laughs> I really do. No, it's just so different than what most people experience. Like. And all, everyone's so different, but yeah, watching your parents be straight obviously affects you in some way, and then watching your parents be bi would affect you in a different way completely, and I can't yeah. imagine if you were, had like gay parents, and then we're, I'm gonna have, if I have kids, like, whatever I am will affect them. It doesn't, it doesn't though, like, people always say that too, do you think because your dad was open and bisexual that that's why you're bisexual? And I'm no, like, it, no, obviously, it will never make someone queer, but. Yeah, my brother is straight as an arrow. Yeah. If that was the case, wouldn't he be bisexual? A hundred percent. So it doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't, but at the same time, it will affect their relationship to their own sexuality in some way, shape, or form, just because we can't help but. I think, like, that's just with everything in general, though. No, as a totally. Parent, whatever you are, but I, I get, yeah. 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 You're so right. <laughs> you're right too. You're so right. we're right we're both right do you feel like you play a different role in your relationships with men versus your relationships with women or are you always showing up just as kira the exact same way i wish i could say that i'm always showing up as kira but i mean i'm bringing it i sound very old but back to the pisces thing <laughs> and you might not relate i know that you're a pisces but i feel like i flow in any situation with any person differently differently so it's the same with men and women. I like a lot of femme guys. The ones that I'm into, like, I had a crush on, like, all the gay guys when I was Classic. growing up. And, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and every guy that, like, my last, the last guy I dated was bisexual. The guy before that was straight, but he was just very, like, femme. And sometimes I'm more like daddy. Okay. <laughs> so... With men, usually, yeah, I am more masculine. Wow, which is kind of maybe the opposite of... Well, no. It's the opposite of what I was going to think you were going to say, but continue. Oh, really? So then with women, it just depends on the woman. Like, I do have a type, like, what I go for. But when it comes to just, like, a vibe in Mm. someone, if it's a more feminine girl, Mm -hmm. I will, once again, be more like, "Mm." But if it's a more masculine girl, like, I have kind of lean more into my soft side. So it's just, like, a flow. But I think with anyone in general I never just like being as whatever whatever they want to say like the roles or whatever like I think I just I like to be both totally and that's how I've always been 
I feel the same way. I, I, I like to be daddy and I like to be baby girl. <laughs> yeah, I no. like both. <laughs> and I want to choose. Yeah, don't. Maybe it's You're, very bisexual. You don't me. have to pick. <laughs> For me, my Pisces-ness. I just like things to feel. <laughs> Pisces-ness. <laughs> I like things to feel comfortable and fluid and nice. So yeah. it's just like a lot of energy shifting of like, okay, you're feeling this way, like I'll be more this way. Yeah. You're feeling that way, I'll be more that way. Okay, but what's your type? <laughs> <laughs> you said it first. I didn't say I'm going to share my t- <laughs> It's not that serious. Um, I feel like, so like my first girlfriend, my first memory of being like, oh, mm. this is... This is going to go down. I'm falling in love, and I'm just looking at the back of her head, which is literally what was happening. But we were going to the movie theater, and I just remember we were all in a like, group of friends. Not my friends, my sister's friends. I came along. She would always feel bad for me. And I just Obsessed remember... with your sister's friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember this girl, like, skateboarding in front of me. And she still had, like, long hair at the time, and it was just, like, going down her back, looking all pretty. And she was just, like, skateboarding, and just very tomboy, but still femme. And it was just, like, oh... That's that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, so, and I was very baby to her. Like, at first, it kind of was, like, pretty fluid in that way. But yeah. but she was, like, in the closet. So as time went on, as, a, like, with us dating, she, like, came more into herself. But, yeah, I always say skater girls. I actually did, like, a Jubilee video. No. Yeah. What's Jubilee? Jubilee? No. And you're on YouTube? What's Jubilee? It's like a, a YouTube station and it's like a small dating show thing or they talk about like serious issues. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I do like maybe I do Go know. watch it. It's cool. It's on YouTube. Okay. But they had me on and I was like explaining my type and I had never said skater girl and then literally the whole episode was like Kira finds love and stating like all these skater girls. I'm dead. Okay. That's <laughs> so a good type. Much, yeah. That's a good type? Yeah. Okay. I think skater girls are cool. What's your type? Um, just <laughs> girlier than me okay i feel like that's my only like consistent type is yeah a little girlier than, a little girlier than me and that's sh- like and shorter <laughs> <laughs> typically shorter than me too yeah so more femme than you more femme than me yeah that's really it but also usually not like prissy girly either mm. so more femme but kind of like an edge like i like an edgy girl yeah i don't know Cool. I like girls. I just thought I would return the question since you put yeah, me, no, thank you, put thank me thank on you, the spot. Thank you, for <laughs> thank you for returning it. It needs to happen. People, people watching the podcast can be like, make people ask you questions. So I'm like, look, Kira's doing oh, it. Oh, I could, I could do that. No. I'll go on your podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah? And then I'll show you how to put it on Spotify. And Okay, cool. Yeah. I film cool. in my bedroom, too. Not yeah. on my bed. It's a little forward of you. But... <laughs> I was trying to make it feel I'm like joking. my old YouTube videos, because that's what all my YouTube videos used to be for my bed. Oh. Anyway. I'm joking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you feel like people think your relationships with men are more, val- are more valid than your relationships with women? Or do you feel like you get more respect? Especially in public, I guess, mm-hmm. is what I'm thinking. No, I feel like, of course. I think with men, and a lot of the men, even though they're very femme, I date like six foot four and up I don't do it on purpose but they're just like large lumberjack looking men so yeah no one's gonna really mess with us yeah I don't think (laughs) and they never have because it's literally like you would be kind of scared yeah because they're just large yeah but with women especially when it's another like very femme girl especially with my first girlfriend all the time we would like go out and you just felt sexualized or mm-hmm. a lot of the time around that point I feel like a lot of men thought you were doing it for them if you yeah, were in like this bar atmosphere and like I'm a very affectionate person not at first but when it's my person like I'm just I want to be touching yeah and I'm very like just an affectionate person so a lot of the times I would just like catch dudes staring or like coming up to us and being like oh do you want us to buy you guys a drink and like all this different stuff and I'd be like no this is my girlfriend yeah. and we're enjoying our time like very respectful but like keep it moving and then it was like oh you think you're too good type of thing or oh what do you you Ugh. know just they yeah got, no I hate that experience so they much. got nasty and it was it's always gross and then when it comes to tv I always have it in the back of my thought like when I'm kissing this very pretty girl right now is is it being but I think that's anything in general like when people see t- but it's a little bit more when it's two women. Yeah. Especially two femme women. Yeah, you know? that's what I was thinking about when you were saying that. Because I definitely had that experience with my my relationships when I dressed more femme. Yeah. Which, I never dressed that femme, but I used to be a lot girlier than I you am had now. <laughs> Do you think I'm bald? The hell? 
I didn't mean it in that way. <laughs> Come back. I didn't <laughs> mean it in that way. No, no, no. I meant you had I longer had long hair. hair. Yes, yes. Longer obviously. hair because you have hair. Oh, thank you. And I love it. Thank you I for the it's great. <laughs> Yes. Okay. No, no. When I was when I had longer hair, even if even if I dress the way I do now, and I have yeah. longer hair, mm-hmm. I get sexualized more by men, which it's weird. Because sometimes it feels nice, which is so bad. Like, it's a very confusing thing. Because I've cut my hair short, and then I let it grow back out, and then I cut it short again. It feels again. nice to be hit on by men? Not, like, the hit on thing, but even just, like, the way that someone at a coffee shop will, like, take your order. You can feel a little bit more validated mm. in your looks, in you a way. You like stopped when you cut your hair. And then when I cut my hair, no, I, I mean, I get it now, too, but... Only from women, mostly. Mm, but that was kind. Of, but it's nice yeah, too. I'm like, no, it's like I don't think you're mad. <laughs> no, I'm not mad, especially but, where I live. Yeah. But it's funny going home to Texas and stuff. Mm-hmm. When I went home to Texas for Christmas this year, I walk in to my friend's family's home, and everyone mentioned my haircut. Mm. Like it was like every single person saying, yeah. "Oh my god, your hair!" Yeah, which is also such a Texas thing to like. It's like the whole bless your heart vibe. I've never spent more than like three days in Texas. So no, I no, no need, no need. But where it's like, I couldn't tell. I'm sure some of them really liked my haircut. Yeah. But the fact that every single person brought it up. You I'm feel like, like a slight in the background like, yeah, it's judgment. Short, it's shorter, huh? You noticed? I definitely got more sexualized with partners when I yeah. presented more, I don't know, acceptable for all yeah. people. But I get what you're saying too when it comes to like men and feeling validated, like for the longest, I was like, no, I am still definitely just into women. I just feel really good with men because it's, I don't know. Yeah. It was like. I mean, it's what we're sold everywhere, too. Yeah. But then I was like, no. I but like Do you I actually like, like them, too? Yeah, and I still kind of bounce around sometimes because sometimes it feels like sexually I love it, and then it's like a really great guy friend, and then we end up in a relationship, and it's just both. But then I'm like, wait, isn't that every relationship? Yeah. Like, all relationships kind of turn to friendship in some way. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not. I can't figure I don't, out. Your I'm still. So, I'm, I'm not that. trying to figure it out though. I think I'm just like if I like someone, I like someone, and that's where I start. Yeah. I don't have to put that pressure on myself. Definitely not. Yeah. Let it happen as it happens. Let it flow. Let it flow. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> okay. I asked you guys over on Instagram to ask us questions, so we're gonna answer a few of them. Starting with, what do you think about happy birthday texts to exes? I mean. My first, like, guy that I was with, he was friends with his exes, and I, I'm not like that for some reason. Mm-mm. I don't know. Maybe if we were friends first, yeah. and then it turned into that, then yeah. it might make sense, but I don't know. Once we've gone there, and I can still have love for you, I just don't circle the block, because I just don't want to feel why it ended again, because it usually comes back up. Yeah, and true. happens again. Yeah, I also feel like it just opens the door. Yeah, for that's what I mean. Why? For mm-hmm. why? Mm-hmm. Not necessary. Also, my thing with happy birthday texts and, like, New Year's texts and Christmas texts and all of them, I'm kind of like, do I want to ruin your day? Oh. <laughs> well, like, I don't know. I don't know if it would make your day or ruin your day. On this special day that you should be having fun, should you be thinking about me today? Unless I have intention of actually, like, fully walking through the door. Okay, yeah. I don't think you should just text. What's the best first date you've ever had? I can answer it while you think. Okay. Okay, the best first date I ever had was when I was in a long-distance relationship, and we had never met in real life, and I mean, I don't know if this is best. This is one of the best, and I we went to a drive-in movie theater, and I, like, surprised her by putting a mattress in the bed of my dad's truck, but my dad had a truck where you could, like, Slick. cover it up, so you couldn't tell there was a mattress back there, oh. and then we drove in Texas to this, like, drive-in movie theater, and then I opened it up, and I was like, oh, we get to, like sit back here but it was funny and my favorite date because so many things went wrong Mm -hmm. we got pulled over on the way there I got four different tickets or something (laughs) horrible and then we got there (laughs) torrential downpour torrential could you even sit on the mattress so because we had that little cover thing Mm -hmm. at one point we had the cover I covered it back up and we were laying like this like watching the movie from the bottom of the mattress but then it rained so hard that it started leaking through (sighs) onto the mattress and then we got into like the front of the car and had like a romantic time in the front of the car like just kissing relax everyone (laughs) anyway but it was it was like the perfect and it was also kind of like my first like girl relationship so it was kind of like I don't know it definitely set a heart a high bar for how romantic and fun and my stomach is growling (laughs) so much have you ever been betrayed by your body like this because I'm pissed 
<laughs> She's got the sweats. Ugh, She's got the I, stomach I'm ache. literally falling apart. <laughs> um, okay. I love that. I think, though, when a date kind of goes wrong or all these things happen and you can just laugh. Like, it's it takes like a sign away... of a better vibe. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it also takes away, like, the nerves and you're just like, Ooh. So true. So true. Now we're in this together. And love it's... when things go wrong. We love when things go wrong. Truly. Then they go right. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, saw you, like, catch that memory and forget it. Um, it was probably not the most recent girl, but, and once again, it was a distance thing. Like, probably would be in a relationship now. But, like, we, she didn't tell me that she was overseas playing basketball, but, like, we matched on Hinge, and we just had, like, a full week, like, the first day What did she do? She, like, brought me to, like, the whole picnic thing and, like, did a whole picnic. And, like, day two, we went to, like, um, where did we do the game? Santa Monica. And, like, did the rides. And it was just, like, a continuation. Like, every day we would hang out and then find another reason that day. (laughs) I said first date. And you said, so on the first day, she she did this on the second day. I'm, like, a voice memo girl. Like, I love them. So we had, like, a full day. And that was enough of voice memos for me to already feel, like, comfortable with her. So on the first day, it was, it was, like, I knew her already. And then every day until she left and then told me two days before she was leaving. How did that not come up? Because she didn't bring it up. That's... It was savage. Yeah. <laughs> savage. Yeah. And then we were long distance for like a second, but never like, we weren't like girlfriends. And then she was going to move back here and then move to New York. <laughs> Jeez. Story started so good. And but I'm... it was like a romantic yeah, week no. of like, and I'm not always like the pusher with things and just mm. every single time we would hang out. She's like, now let's go do this. And I'm like, you want to see me again today? And, but it wasn't, Sweet. it's never too much if you like the person. No. It's too much if you don't like no. the person. Yeah it's, yeah. it's like things that would be a red flag with yeah. one person. The other person, you're like, this is the sweetest thing anyone ever Exactly. Did like, but if you, you don't, so you're much. like, you're creepy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. Okay. Yeah. I like that answer. Yeah. Picnics are cute. I'm a romantic. Would you ever forgive someone if they cheated on you? Years ago, I would say... Yes, because I did do that with my first boyfriend, but as much as I wanted to forgive him and, like, trust him again, and, like, Mm -hmm. with my parents being together for so long, and they've always said the biggest thing is trust, and once Mm -hmm. the trust is broken, why are you smirking like that? (laughs) I was thinking about growling, (laughs) and I couldn't stop it, it was cold. (laughs) Shannon! I don't even know I'm going to edit around this, I'm going to have to leave it in, sorry everybody. It's human, let let them know Uh, you're human. I know, but it's... With your oh. parents, trust is the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, trust is the biggest thing. So when he cheated on me, and it was with literally his ex fiance, the same person that he was like, You're, I was like, Can you stop talking to your ex weekly? <laughs> <laughs> just a small request. Just a, just a small, little tiny just a little request. One. And he was like, Well, we were engaged, which was already like a lot for mm-hmm. me. Um, but first boyfriend, like, maybe I'm being immature. He's almost 30. Like, he knows best. You just think that kind of thing. And he was, like, honestly, last time I kissed her, it was, like, kissing his sister. So I was like, okay, cool. And then, oh, yeah. no. Why and would you say he, that? They were, like, not grew up in the same town, but, like, had the same friend group from, like, his hometown. He went back to his hometown for a wedding one weekend, and... I'm not even, like, super text-me-every-day type of girl. Mm. I actually like my days off yeah. in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> I do! And I just remember him going ghost for the whole weekend and I was just like that's weird and I was introducing him to my parents when he came back from the trip and he chose to tell me when I was like still smoking cigarettes we were like out in the balcony (laughs) together smoking a cig and I just had a feeling I'm intuitive a woman's intuition yeah and I was like um so you saw blah 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 there how'd that go and he was honest and shared with me how it went and after that, once again, he was like, it was like kissing a sister. And I was like, well, can again. you please not talk to her? Because yeah. it makes me uncomfortable now. And he was like, you're just really immature. People can be friends with their exes. And I'm like, you're really messed up because you cheated on me with her. Yeah. So um, I loved him. I tried to continue, but I just couldn't. As much as I wanted to trust him, I was like, yeah, no, I'm I terrified now. It, the second you're not in my space. It's one thing to say that you would say with someone, and then it's another thing to actually try. Yeah. Because would you? Yeah. I've never been cheated on as far as I know. Okay. But if I were, I think that I would have to walk away from that relationship Mm -hmm. because just knowing myself, I don't know. It's like the whole, I think I could forgive someone, but I don't think I'd ever forget it. And I don't think I'd want to go like through the rest of my life with that in the back of my head of like worrying and wondering. My last question is, what is your love language? Mm, Physical touch. Is that like, would you say, okay, let's do our top three. 
What's your top three? Aren't there just how many are there? I think six. Okay. Do you want me to name them? Sure. It seems like you know though. I two are like the ones. Okay. Um, physical touch, and I am somewhat of an overthinker, mm-hmm. and I get better as the relationship goes on. But I do somewhat need to be reassured that you like so me. words of affirmation. <laughs> yeah, me. Too. Yeah. Those are mine too. So physical touch, and then words of affirmation, and then what are the other ones? The all of them are touch. Words of affirmation, quality time, gift giving, gift giving, acts of service. Acts of service would be like if your partner made the bed for you every morning oh. or like washed the dishes. It's kind of like more like selfless acts that okay. are meant to be like, look, I did that because I love you. Okay. But yeah, I would say minor physical touch and words of affirmation too. It's crazy thing. Yeah. Did you have fun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just being sad. I had a great time. Did you actually? I was nervous, but you were already so nervous that I couldn't tell you I was nervous. Okay, I feel like it. I feel like if anything, though, we went all over the place. It was all over the place. But I feel like it was interesting. There were no like gaps. Hey, I like. Hopefully, if you like it, it's your podcast. Yeah, yeah, happy to be here. I'm like editing the fuck out of it later. No, I like it. I think. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what I'm talking about. You're coming on my next. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it to it. Oh my God. I want to. Thank you guys so much for watching X's and O's. I'm your host, Shannon Beverage. This is Kira Green. Follow her on all her social media. Do you have anything coming up that people should look out for? Your podcast, obviously. My podcast on all my socials, I guess, but can't share much right now. Can I even share Zoe? Yeah. I already posted that I'm going to be in Zolita's next music video. Yes. It's coming out in February. Keep an eye out. I creative directed it, so I touched it too, and (laughs) it's going to be so amazing. We were just watching a part of it before this, and it's so good, and obviously everything Zoe does is amazing, so keep an eye out, and yeah, follow us on all our socials. Goodbye. (laughs) Cool.